Finally, we have a completely revamped and updated DxO Pure RAW. Here is the brand new version 3. Let's go. Welcome back, this is Jimmy Chang from Red35. Just a year ago, I reviewed DxO's Pure Raw version 2, a uh, not so enthusiastic update from the original Pure Raw 1. Why? Because there are no significant improvements unless you are looking for one that's compatible with new cameras, and for me, OM Systems OM1 Raw file, and if you have an Apple Silicon Power computer. As I already have the OM1, I have no choice but to recommend version 2, only because of its better compatibility of newer cameras. And I don't have any Apple Silicon machines, so I didn't get to enjoy the claim speed improvements. But DxO obviously listens to the feedbacks, and this year's version 3 has much to prove that it's still the king in raw demosaking and denoising software on the planet. So without further ado, let's go. I always call Pure Raw the washing machine to any digital raw files. It basically uses AI to denoise and demosate files, so you get images that are free from noise and aliasing. This works extremely well with any images at different ISO settings. And this year's version 3 has a brand new mode, D-Prime XD, well, directly from Photolab 6. And this is a new denoising mode that extracts more details from any images but it is also a mode that prevented me from reviewing Photolab 6 released last year. <laughs> well, DxO acknowledge and they have confirmed me that D-Prime XD is not better than D-Prime, just different. A slightly different narrative to when DxO launched Photolab 6 last year. And the reason I'm highlighting this that the new XD option is not for everyone. Well, certainly not for me. For someone who shoots a lot of portraits or fine art, Deep Prime XD could potentially ruin your images. For example, if you have some harsh shadow on your subject's face, using XD will enhance the shadow line to the point that it looks like a solid line that being drawn on the subject's face. <laughs> and this is counterproductive, even though the noise is all but gone. And in such case, you may want to employ standard Deep Prime instead. But where XD excels is when your images involve a lot of details, such as cityscape or certain landscape or macro shots, where extra detail is highly appreciated. But all in all, DxO now has various options for you to clean your dirty laundry. <laughs> and we all like more options so we can decide what we need, right? So, it is good. Many always said the original Pure Raw, and I mean, <laughs> both version 1 and 2 was way too simple. For instance, there is no option to alter the strength of lens distortion and sharpness. But with version 3, you finally get to choose what you want to do with the processing. In addition to various different noise reduction methods, you now get to choose correct lens softness, vignette, chromatic aberration, and lens distortion individually. A combination of them or all of them at once. In particular, both lens softness and lens distortion, you can alter the strength of each correction and the type of correction respectively. And this is something that many pure raw users were hoping to see in version 2. And their wishes are finally granted in version 3. <laughs> so finally, a brownie point for DxO. This is a big plus for me, as a heavy user of pure raw. Currently, my workflow is usually importing images to Adobe Lightroom, then code what I need, send them all to Pure Raw to clean, then return back to Lightroom for final edits before exporting. <laughs> I know, this is not everyone's workflow, but what I would like to say is that when Pure Raw is processing images, you can't do more until it finishes its tasks. Well, version 3 adds multitasking by means of queuing. Now, you can add more files to the queue while it processing images. This means I can be more efficient and productive and not wasting any time at all. But there is a catch. That catch is your computer. 
And like any AI programs, you need to have some serious hardware to ensure your workflow is smooth. If you're only processing one or two images at a time, then, well, it shouldn't be a problem. However, as soon as you start to process tens and hundreds of photos, you will hear the fan of your computer kicking in full strength. The amount of processing power required is simply insane. And I'm only speaking from experience with my 20 megapixel Micro Four Thirds files. Any bigger files mean that you will cock up the computer resources for much longer. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is that while queuing is a good addition to Pure Raw 3, and certainly beneficial to pros and heavy users like me. But unless you have a very powerful computer with the latest generation processor with dedicated AI cores, you may find that queuing is simply not a feasible option. But if you do, Pure Wall 3 is certainly classified as a professional software. So what's my verdict on Pure Wall 3? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or simply just go ahead and buy or upgrade? Well, I think you should just go ahead and buy or upgrade. Pure Raw 3 is the biggest true update from DxO since the original launch two years ago. So whether you're on version 1 or version 2, this latest version 3 is a worthy upgrade, given the fact that this is a user-configurable raw denoise tool that finally answered many photographers' wishes since the original version. And the latest Deep Prime XD may be a niche addition, but it can be useful for many uh, photographers who demand extra details for certain situations. For me, the original Deep Prime is already perfect, but version give me more options to fine tune the strength of correction is very, very good. <laughs> so anyway, this is the end of my hands-on review on DxO's latest Pure Raw version 3. And let me know in the comment section below whether you like this update or not. And what's your experience on Pure Raw? And well, if you have any other DSO products. And thanks again for watching. If yeah, you know what to do now, thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with more about photography, filmmaking, and of course, Michael Four Thirds. Peace. Well, thank you for sticking around. First and foremost, I would like to thank you for all those lovely messages about my health. And uh, yeah, thank you for that. At the moment, I'm still waiting for results, so I can't really say anything for sure. Uh, but I'm watching off of my diet. I'm trying to be more active uh, as we speak. Breathing-wise, I still feel about the same, to be quite honest. I don't feel any more different, and, uh, but only time will tell. And hopefully that uh, uh, it's not something that I should be too worried about. But anyway, um, DxO, you know, what do you think about it? And I think this version 3 is definitely a worthy update. Uh, version 2, not so much. Uh, I had to upgrade to version 2 because that's the only version that is compatible with OM1, and uh, which is the camera that I currently use. Um, so I, I had no choice but to upgrade to version 2. It's a shame that they just don't uh, update the version 1 anymore. So you're kind of pretty stuck. And uh, if you have a newer camera, you have to upgrade to version 2. Uh, so there were no significant updates, but version 3 is definitely different. And uh, I would say that uh, performance-wise, is probably speed-wise about the same. Uh, but definite user interface, you now have more configurable options, which is great. And uh, uh, I like the queuing. I like the queuing. But make sure that you do have a powerful computer to do that. Otherwise, yeah, you will be struggling. It, everything would basically slow down if you uh, don't have enough RAM or you don't have a, a powerful processor to basically clean up the files as uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so bear that in mind, and uh, it's not for everyone uh, for the queuing feature because, uh, uh, like I said, yeah, you, yeah, you really, really do need a powerful computer. Now I have the M2 machine, the Apple Silicon. I can really confirm the improved speed. It's definitely probably double, I would say double. I don't have anything scientific to compare because I don't have the old computer anymore. So I can't really say that the uh, the original is uh, as, you know, whatever speed and the, the, the latest M2 machine is whatever, you know, double the speed of stuff, but it feels like double the speed. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite quite significant actually. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm happy about uh, version three now that I can have the option to queue up because my workflow basically uh, allows me to um, uh, continue to work. Basically, I don't have to stop. Uh, 
in the old version uh, uh, pure raw and I, I literally have to stop because I have to wait until the the batch I was dealing with uh, completed before I have to do the second batch and now I can keep adding to it which is fantastic so there you go and uh, thank you much for watching and uh, let me know your thoughts about DxO and because uh, I do like them uh, unfortunately there are something I would like to say probably in a separate video and the DxO seem to have slipped away a little bit in the last year or so so hopefully version 3 seems like a good sign that they're coming back and I do hope to see the next version of Photolab will improve significantly because Photolab 6 and 5 again is only a minor update and uh, this is one of the reasons I didn't really review the photo lab 6 when they released it last year the D prime XD was really the the main feature the main shout out in photo lab 6 but like I mentioned it wasn't really for me so uh, I, there's no point really for me to do talk about XD when I'm not really using it and uh, but other features are fairly similar to version 5 so uh, it's, it's nothing for me to talk about so hopefully version 7 at some point this year we have some significant update. I'm waiting for that. And what would be your thoughts about uh, what DxO should implement in their photo, uh, upcoming uh, Photo Lab 7? When I say upcoming, I mean like later on this year. I have no idea what they're doing. Um, but I do hope to have some uh, more significant updates, not just the minor feature enhancements. You know, I need to see brand new ideas, just brand new stuff, you know, whatever stuff is, whatever that stuff is. My English is crap. Anyway, <laughs> I will see you all very soon. And then uh, thank you again for watching. And I will see you all very soon. Bye for now.